guys, it's Emma and I'm back today for you with another video and today I'm doing a vlog, all right? I am doing a vlog that uh, is going to consist of me reading uh, horror books, spooky books, whatever you want to call them, throughout the month of October, all right? I thought it, you know, was fitting since it's the month of Halloween and I would like to try to fully ingratiate myself in the spirit of Halloween. What better way to do that than to read scary books and watch scary movies? Okay, so um, throughout this vlog, I'm going to be trying to read, <laughs> emphasis on trying, um, to read uh, just scary books, horror books, and in like in between those segments, obviously, I'm going to be watching like um, horror movies, scary movies with my mom because uh, we both made a list. We've got a wheel that we're gonna spin to choose what movie we watch and uh, you know I'm gonna show you bits and pieces of them but as for the books right now I am starting with Tomie by Jinji Ito all right. I've been wanting to read Tomie for a while um, and girl she's a chunker all right she's damn near 800 pages. Um, I already started on it all right um, I may be about 300 something pages away from the ending and I'm gonna try and finish this tonight. That way I can knock out a book for this vlog pretty easily and pretty quickly. Um, I might be cheating here, but you know what, it's my video. I'm gonna be showing you guys the other books that I have. So before we actually get started, I would really, really appreciate it if you guys would look down in the description box for all the links that I have for you guys pertaining to stuff going on in the world right now. Those links will be down there for you guys to interact with and to share. And then down in the comment section, let me know whether or not you guys have read any of these books that I'm gonna be reading in this vlog, whether you've seen any of these movies that I'm gonna be watching watching in this vlog, um, anything of the sort, right? So with that being said, let's get into Tomie. Also, peep the pumpkin head shirt because I watched it maybe like two months ago and needless to say, I've been obsessed. Hear me out. Okay, hear me out. Please hear me out. Yeah. Okay. So, um, it is midnight, which means it is now October 2nd. And I have finished Tomie. Um, I'm giving it three stars. Okay. Um, I gotta admit, I'm a little underwhelmed. As interesting as the initial story and premise is, it gets very repetitive. All right, this book is almost 800 pages. All right, and it's just Tomie, like causing chaos, causing men to fall in love with her, and then they kill her over and over and over again. And that's pretty much all this book is. Um, and it's to the point where <laughs> I honestly was starting to wonder, okay, so is this like a commentary or something along those lines about like, um, like violence against women uh, because then that would make sense you know why we see it over and over and over again through the same situations by the same perpetrators but if that is the case just in my opinion comes off in very poor taste all right because it's well like once again it is literally 800 pages just of the same woman getting butchered over and over and over and over to say this is a disappointment would probably be an understatement so, um, that's the first book of the vlog, all right? Um, I'm gonna grab three right now, and we're actually gonna use Wyatt for a moment, all right? We're gonna see which book she picks. All right, I ended up just grabbing two, because uh, these are both relatively short compared to that behemoth. So, boom, boom. And now we wait. Oh, work. So, Wyatt chose Brother, and... This is going to be my third Anya Allborn book that I, that I will have read. All right. Um, I'm going to be completely honest. I've read Seed and Within These Walls. Hated both of them. I know. Eight hours later. So it's about 6.30 um, on October 2nd. And I am a little over 100 pages into Brother. The only two gripes that I have right now is that... And maybe this is coming off of me having watched the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, like the original one, um, maybe like a day or two ago. So if that is the case, completely understand that. However, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I'm getting kind of tired of 
the stereotypical cannibalistic, murderous, on top of that incestuous, whatever else family always being in the South. The other gripe that I have is with Michael's love interest, which, okay, to be fair, I've just realized I have not in fact told y'all what brother is about. Um, brother is about Michael Morrow and the Morrow family who live in Appalachia and they are, you guessed it, a murderous uh, serial killer family. And Michael is the baby. He doesn't kill anybody, but he disposes of the bodies and he wants out. He wants out of this. Um, understandably so, right? Uh, and one day he and his older brother, they both go to this record store um, in the town nearby and Michael meets this girl named Alice. And Michael's immediately smitten with her. And I am waiting <laughs> very cautiously for Alice to become a, man a manic pixie dream girl. Okay, um, and the reason why I'm waiting for this is because of um, an exchange that uh, they both have. In his monologue goes, he wanted to start over, forget who he was, and become the person he knew Alice could make him. So that's either very strategic writing, and we're going to make a comment about uh, Michael not really liking Alice like that, if this does become a Manic Pixie Dream Girl thing, or... It's just a mini pixie dream girl with no commentary on it, which I just want Michael to get the hell out of this family, all right? Because Michael isn't even from this family, all right? This family kidnapped him when he was three, snatched him right out of his front yard, all right? Um, and like the family is just awful. It's just an awful place to be around. This book is already pretty dark and I want to see if it's going to go darker. And if it does, how is it going to do so? I'm going to try and get to page 200 and uh, we're gonna see how this goes. As of right now, <clears throat> I'm on page 207 of brother um and i'm not gonna lie i really couldn't care less about the romance <laughs> okay i just want him to get the hell out of this abusive household um and away from these dipshit people the only thing honestly that's making me want to continue this book is to find out whether or not michael gets away um because look it's not awful it's kind of just boring i don't know it's just it's just missing a little mm. You know what I mean? It's not, it's, it's, it's a decent book. Is it the most disturbing book I've ever? No. Um, but did I need to see one of these little boys rip, literally rip the wings off of a pheasant while, while it was still alive? No, I didn't need to see that. I, I, I don't care. All right. I don't. I'm so good on that. I'm great. Anyway, uh, goal for tonight, watch a scary movie um hopefully finish this or get close to finishing it and get at least one schoolwork assignment done so those are my goals for tonight and now i have finished brother First of all, love Pumpkinhead, love Lance Henriksen, all right, Pumpkinhead will always be a classic for me. It's just so fun. It's just so much fun, all right. Brother, on the other hand, was not. Look, there's something that Anya Allborn has done in all three books that I have read of her that I can only assume she continues to do in all of her other books um, that annoys me to pieces honestly, all right? And that is one, <clears throat> she kills the main character every single time and she kills everybody else. <laughs> I know. She wants to give her thoughts too. But yeah, um, it's just predictable. Like the entire time, like even the big twist at the very end, predictable. Like I said earlier, I'm, I was kind of just waiting for that oomph. But it never came. However, I did really like um, how it dealt with, you know, generational trauma 
and how it unfolds in families, especially if it's kept in the family. I really, really enjoyed that. However, what I think could have remained a really good commentary on generational trauma, um, instead, with the very, very, very last twist, um, turned into a generic thriller. And that felt cheap. Is this the best Anya Allborn book I've read? Yes. Am I probably gonna buy another Anya Allborn book to read? No. <laughs> no. Um, because every single time I read it, the same thing happens. It's the same ending, just different stories. Um, and it's, it's boring. It's predictable. It gets tired, girl. But yeah, no. Can't do that anymore. Now, I have a package here, and I'm gonna open it with y'all. Because it's... It's supposed to have one of the books that I want to read for this vlog. I also, of course, <laughs> got some other books that I was very excited to read. Um, for example, I got, oh wow, it's so much. <gasps> okay, um, I got the third book in the uh, the Ending Fire trilogy by Sara El Arifi. And sorry, I was just flabbergasted by how much shorter this book is than the other two. And now I'm terrified. <laughs> Next, I saw this on TikTok and I'm a simple woman. I see a pretty cover. I buy it. All right. I remember I looked it up and it seemed like something that I was really interested in, but I don't quite remember what it is now. Um, and just, it, it looks really cool and it sounded really cool. Um, I can't wait to pop it back open and remember what it was about. <laughs> and then lastly, okay, the book that I bought for this vlog um, was The Eyes Are the Best Part by Monica Kim. All right. First of all, the cover. Did you, did you, did you really expect me to just pass by this cover as if it just didn't exist? I'm really excited about this book and this book is going to be the next one that I read for this vlog. All right. Um, however, as of the moment, I'm going to go to bed and, um, sit and wallow in the utter doom that is my college work. So, it is now Sunday the 6th, and y'all, when I tell you that The Eyes of the Best Part by Monica Kim may or may not be the best book that I've read so far, this book is amazing. All right, um, I, whoa, like the writing in this, Okay, so I'm not gonna lie. When I first got into this book, I didn't know necessarily what it was gonna be about. It's essentially about this girl becoming a serial killer, right? Um, in order to protect her family. And just, wow, the shit, okay, between mother and daughter in here, um, her anger, her loneliness particularly was really relatable. Just at times here, I was like, wow. This might be like a new favorite main character of mine. Like she was so just addicting to follow, all right? Like Oh my gosh, the way the way the way this whole story like moved, it was great. All right, her cunning, I loved it. This might be a new favorite horror book of mine, I fear. All right? Like the way that this book has a grip on me right now, Scientists should study, okay? This book is just so good. If you've been debating whether or not to read this book, girl, pick it up. Pick it the fuck up, all right? Pick yourself up and then go pick this book up. We love authors that put in short chapters, all right? I feel like it just makes the book fly by. Let me just say the other books that I have to read in this vlog, they have some pretty big shoes to fill, all right? So The Eyes are the Best Part, I gave this five stars. Um, I think this is a new favorite horror book of mine. I've been debating whether or not this is a new favorite book of mine, just in general. Oh my goodness, it's so good. Nevertheless, I'm hoping that the horror is going to be even greater, okay? Because look, the amount of people that I've seen recommending this to fans of body horror, all right? If you know me, okay, I really enjoy body horror. It's like uncannily and disturbingly fascinating. Also, it says um, it's supposed to be a gore-soaked folk horror. All right, and I'm starting to realize that I really enjoy folk horror. Also, this book is exactly 200 pages. I could knock this out in two days if I wanted to. All right, if I had the time, really, that's the kicker. But nevertheless, um, I'm gonna read this book. I'm gonna paint my nails, um, cause I haven't done that in a long time. And I will give y'all an update whenever I can. Later that same evening. See, when they said this book was body horror, 
I didn't think we were talking rectally. Essentially what this is about, right? It's about the Scottish village called Witchhaven. And um, essentially what's going on is it's being hounded and harassed daily by this American corporation that wants to essentially move all the residents out, bulldoze it, and make it a golf course. Because of course, Muriel, our main character, she's uh, an older lady. And uh, pretty much all the rest of the residents are older people because they don't want to leave. Because why the hell would they? Right? And um, uh, she's found like this blob, essentially, that um, is able to, for whatever reason, like telepathically communicate with her. And um, it's got like, it's, it's, it's literally just like a gelatinous blob, but it's like got this one big eye. One big ugly eye looking for me. This guy who has been, mm, who we can only assume to have been hired by the corporation to flush out um, these residents by any means necessary. One of these guys has found his way into Muriel's house and has found this blob. And um, this blob has attacked him in a way <laughs> where, um, you know how uh, you like pull a chain in order to start lawnmowers? <laughs> I'll just leave it there. I cannot wait for this thing to essentially exact these villagers' revenge. I cannot wait. I, I simply cannot wait. All right? Like, I'm, I'm twiddling my thumbs. If this is any indicator as to what the hell is going to be happening for the rest of this book... I'm sat. So I finished the har and so far I'm gonna give it five stars, all right? Like, this was so good. Folk horror, bless up. It's gory, it's gross, all right? And it's oddly very tragic. You know what I mean? Like, like I remember I, I was literally just looking at reviews of this because I was like, okay, you know, what's the consensus, girl, you know? And this one reviewer was like, is sentimental horror a thing? Because if it is, and you know what? Can't agree more. And all I have to say is, uh, for Muriel, our main character, good for her. Good for her. Ooh, it's not gonna beat the eyes of the best part. That's just simply how it is. However, this is a very close second, and I think it's fitting that the eyes of the best part and the horror are both five stars, and they both have eyes on the cover. So at that moment, I will literally shut the hell up, because <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. So. What I'm now gonna start on is Little Eyes, all right? I got this from um, Kayla, uh, from one of her books and Lala vlogs. I think it was one where she read like a bunch of books with eyes on the cover or something like that. And I remember the concept being real freaky deaky, all right? And uh, plus the cover, I'm a simple woman. I see cute panda, I click, I, I turn page. It's about like these stuffed animals, I guess, that have like video cameras for eyes and wheels for feet that follow people around in their house and people can pay, I assume, to like watch through the stuffed animals and like watch these people, you know what I mean? And you know, the concept originally, I was like, oh, okay, you know, that's actually kind of sweet. Like I can definitely see people that are lonely really wanting that and finding really great solace in that and comfort. And I'm like, okay. But at the same time, there's that really twisted aspect where it's like, okay, but who's really watching you? You know what I mean? I'm probably gonna start that tomorrow, maybe tonight, if I'm just <laughs> feeling a little adventurous.
long time no see. Um, sorry about that. It is now the damn near the end of the month and I have not updated y'all about anything. However, you didn't miss much, okay? Because this entire time I have been reading Little Eyes and I just, what, yesterday and last night got to pages 100 and then 200. All right, so I haven't really even been picking it up to read because if I'm gonna be completely straight here, I'm bored, honestly. This book is supposed to be horror, but girl, nothing horrifying has been happening, all right? You know what I mean? Like, don't get me wrong, it's unnerving, all right? It's very unnerving, but I mean, the premise already kind of sets up like what, the first third of that feeling of unnerviness up by itself. So this entire book, I've really just been waiting for that extra something to happen to make this book be like whoa you know what I mean each chapter is a different person's point of view and um mostly we have like our main characters our main points of view that we're following but every now and then we'll have like a random one just showing us you know what's going on on you know other parts of the planet right which would be fine if the book itself which I think is under 260 pages all right this would work if the book was longer, but it's not. So the fact that it feels like you've spent the first 100 pages setting up your book when there's 150 pages left, something's not adding up. I'm not finding it interesting enough to pick up to read, honestly. I'm just trying to finish it. All right, it's like brother. I feel like the idea was better than the execution. I'm gonna finish that tonight, but as of right now, I'm gonna go to buy some makeup because I've been working with years old makeup at this point. And then I might go and buy some books. We never know. <laughs> Okay, it is, <laughs> it was no clock. It is about two something in the morning. And um, I finished Little Lies and I gave it two stars, okay? Um, it was boring. It was very, very boring. Um, I feel like this book would have honestly slapped had it come out in the 90s. The idea of this book is not new. All right, and that's not bad. It's just, we've seen it so many times, right? Which means when you do um, an idea that many people have done previously, you need to be able to have something that makes it your own, that makes it a really good twist, something that people remember, something that stands out from the crowd, right? This book unfortunately did not have that, okay? Because even though it had like the little Kentucky twist, it wasn't scary. I think this should have been a short story. Not to mention just all of their stories felt so shallow and unsatisfying. And I think the reason why I'm saying shallow is because I'm piggybacking off of the fact that this book was just so boring, all right? It was boring when it should have been really, really weird, all right? This is tech horror, but it's really a tech snorer. This book, was a really cool idea, but the execution of it re fell so flat. But I will let y'all know what book I start now, because this may or may not be the last book of the vlog. So I'm gonna try and make it one that I would really, really like. So it is daylight, um, and I have chosen a book that probably will be the last book of this vlog, but hopefully it'll be a banger, okay? Because um, this is, one of my favorite subgenres of horror, or at least it's one of my favorite tropes. It's got a cult, all right? And it is Gather the Daughters. And from what I gather, uh, this book is about um, a cult that 10 men founded when they colonized an island. The women are not treated very well. And um, one of the girls there, she discovers like a really bad secret or something. And um, so, it says here the girls lead an uprising that may be their salvation or their undoing. So 
this sounds really really good i've been trying to find cult books that i would really like um because i read revelator like however many months ago and it was okay but uh, I can't wait to read this honestly it, it sounds really good it's under 400 pages and I don't know I think this would be a really really good book to end the vlog on because who doesn't love a good cult book okay righty um now look I don't want any of y'all to be shocked, okay? But, hi. I'm trying to practice my Halloween look for the crow. And girl, look, I know it's gray, all right? I bought gray to practice with. I've got the white right here. I look wild. Like, hi, okay, like, I'm so sorry. Like, I was so psyched and now I'm looking at it and maybe it's just, I don't think imposter syndrome is the right word, but nevertheless, this just, th like, this looks like shit. <laughs> like, oh my God, I actually can't look at my face. I don't know why it's my eyes, my eyes are freaking me out. I wanted to talk to y'all about uh, Gather the Daughters, all right? Cause I got to page 200 um, and I'm going to put on like the little, things right here. Here is the reference photo. <laughs> so this book uses pregnancy and labor and um, birth as like horror aspects. Okay, um, so if you're not down with that, you probably will not like this book, but I feel like it's just that much creepier. Hmm. What I think is really genius about this writing style is that we have seen all the way up to where I am, all right, we have seen diabolical and horrifying crap. We see it so much, we see it happen so many times, we've, we've been witness to it so many times, and yet every single time afterwards, there's almost this feeling of like this tiny little sliver of hope that it's not going to happen again. And we're kind of lulled into almost a false sense of security. And yet at the same time, um, there's like this overwhelming tone of just dread. It's so in your face with the just abysmal stuff that happens in this book. And yet at the same time, it's also so subtle with it. It honestly makes your book able to be read more than once, especially considering the subject matter in this book. That's why so many people say that Titanic is such a great movie because no matter how many times you watch it and no matter how many times you know what's gonna happen, all right, there's always this tiny little sliver of hope that there's that they're going to just at the last moment dodge the iceberg, you know what I mean? That's what keeps people watching it, you know? And I feel like this book employs that just in a book format and I think that is so smart. Bear with your girl for a moment. Hmm. Oh! You know what? It is these, it's these things. It's these things. This suddenly looks so much better. All right, like. <laughs> But yeah, um, as of right now, the girls are like starting a revolution, which good for them. They are literally treated less than cattle. If as much as cattle. All right. Because like just the language that's used ah, makes me think of um, um, Tender is the Flesh, just with how you know, the language is warped to make these people seem subhuman in order to make it easier to mistreat them. What do I look like? That fucking puppet from FNAF. <laughs> I am going to be going as the crow, but also with a little bit of sting in there. 
All right, um, Sting the Wrestler, if y'all aren't aware, um, his last gimmick that he retired with was inspired by The Crow, and he had, like, a black bat. And so I bought a black bat for, like, 20 bucks. And so I'm going to be walking around um, dressed as Eric Draven with a black bat. So, and I like wrestling. I like wrestling a lot. Sting was one of my favorite wrestlers. He still is. Um, so I just thought that would be a really cool... I don't know, mishmash, because he's one of my favorite wrestlers, The Crow's one of my favorite movies. I don't know. But nevertheless, um, I will update y'all if and when I finish this, because uh, it looks like you girls are going to be able to finish this after all. <laughs> so it is officially Halloween. <laughs> I'm going to try and get this video up as quickly as I can, but I have, in fact, finished Gather the Daughters. I'm giving this five stars. Okay, this is probably one of the most bittersweet, bleak, dreadful books I think I've ever read. This is probably one of my new favorite cult books. That is going to close out this vlog. And I thought, what better way to recap the vlog by going through all the books that I've read, because I read six books total for this vlog, which I'm very proud of myself for doing. Um, and I'm just going to go through them with y'all. First, I read Tomie. I initially gave this three stars, lowered it down to two, specifically because this just got very, very repetitive and at times left a bad taste in my mouth. Next, I read Brother. I gave this three stars. Decent, but missing something and a little bit repetitive given the fact that both of the other books that I've read by the same author ended the damn near the exact same way. As this book did so next I read the eyes of the best part the first five-star book from this vlog um absolutely loved this the writing was great the main character was awesome the rage in here was great this is a vengeance book and just wow one of my new favorite horror books then I read the har which I also gave five stars full horror extraordinaire all right bloody gory gross all right, just a blood-soaked good time. Then I read Little Eyes, um, gave it two stars because it was boring, a little shallow, and um, just not executed very well. And then lastly, to close out the vlog, I read Gather the Daughters, which gets five stars, just all around dreadful, bittersweet, and bleak. I am very proud. <laughs> If y'all have read any of these books, let me know down below whether or not you agree or disagree with anything I say about these books down below. That has been my um, October <laughs> reading vlog. I hope that you guys have enjoyed. I had a lot of fun filming this vlog. Um, normally vlogs cause me a lot of stress, but this vlog was just really, really fun. Um, and look on my Instagram to see how my The Crow cosplay turns out. I am pretty proud of it, okay? So you guys, with that being said, I hope that you've enjoyed. I hope that you continue to look out for more stuff on my channel. I hope that you guys are staying safe. And lastly, I hope that you guys have a great rest of your day. Goodbye!